you have with your student. You must nurture that relationship with your student, your FGAC. The second is the mindset. Different mindsets, how they are thinking, how they are feeling in the moment. Because of technology, students, their mindsets are being rewired. And it's upsetting me a lot. It's hurting me. Because those of you who know me know that I have two amazing children. My daughter is 15 now, and my son is 10. So I see it live. <laughs> Excuse me. I see it live. I see it happening in the house. And so with this experience with my kids, I ask myself, what the hell are they going to do in their future? Are they prepared? So the one thing that students need to understand is the language you are teaching them, English, is a subject that will open doors for them globally. So I don't want them coming to you and saying, oh, I have to come, I have to learn. I want them to want to learn English. And that starts with you guys, the teachers, the educationalists. <laughs> now I stand here before you as an educationalist for over 26 years. But before that, my career did not start as me saying, oh, I want to be a teacher, yay! No. It started here, wanting to be a basketball player. I wonder why. <laughs> At 40 years old, I loved basketball. I was a tiny little guy. And so my mother bought me a basketball. But she didn't buy me the training basketball, those little ones. She bought me a regular sized basketball that was bigger than my face, than my head. So I was going, oh, 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 oh. I had no control, <laughs> but I wanted to play. So she said, okay, play. I'll put you on a team. And she did. And I did. And I liked it even though I wasn't very good. <laughs> and so the coach looked at me and said, he has height, but no skill. No talent. So instead of saying, I will train this child to become better, he focused his attention on those players that were really good at basketball. Sound familiar in class sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> and so, from four to five, six, seven, eight, I had this mindset. And it was this year. I thought I had to be better than everybody else on the team. And so my mother, my number one cheerleader, said, no, honey, you don't have to believe and think that you have to be better than everybody else. Just like your students in class, how they compete. And the parents, oh, those wonderful, adoring parents are in the triangular relationship of education who want their kids and push their kids and stress their kids for the grade. And so my coach, really didn't focus on me. And so that passion, that love for the game started to leave. And as I was upset, my mother continued something else based on this. And she said, believe you have to be better than you ever thought you could be. And so this mindset I share with you for me eons ago when I was a little kid and ask you to share it with your students. Tell them about this. <coughs> Have them understand that in class it's not about the grade and having to be the best. It's about improving little by little. Growth. I know that you're pressured of the standardized tests and trying to finish the book. Here having 
the society and the parents on top of you. But remember, you need to take a step back and say, wait a minute. These FGACs are not here just to learn for today or for the test. They're here to learn English for their future. All right. So I'm going to be sharing with you now some questions for reflection for when you leave us today. The first is, why do you teach the way you do? Something I want you to think about. All right. The next is, how do my students, oh, they love me, and my colleagues, they hate me, how do they view you? I give good grades, I don't give a lot of homework, they love me, my kids, my colleagues love me. And yet this is reality, guys, you know me, I don't sugarcoat, I say it as it is. And so it's very important for this relationship also between you guys to become stronger. Help each other. What's working? What isn't working? Help each other to do better as a team. Because that's who you are. That's what you are. You're a team. The next question, what kind of teacher are you? So right now, I want you to take 15 seconds, 15, Greg, why not 10, why not 20? 15 seconds to think of an answer. One word, maybe two. <coughs> Describing you <coughs> as what kind of teacher are you? <coughs> Bless you. Positive and character. Positive and character. Who said just one word? Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? Tell me the truth. See, you don't want to share who said it. Don't write this down. Right away, we have a student who was like, you didn't listen. He said one word, but I didn't just say one. I said, use two. So in essence, she was right. Positive. Caring. Energetic, professional, sarcastic, sarcastic, That's me. Oh my goodness, wait a second. No doubt of that, teachers think they're Liberal teachers, liberal, yes. Interactive, inspiring, inspiring, oh my goodness, inspiring. What else? Give it to me, baby. Come on, come on. Flexible. Flexible. Which I'm not. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Some of you are talking to one another. I don't want that. I want you to talk to me. And give me your answer. You are not liberal. I'm not liberal. You think so. What else? High person. What's that? High person. That gives motivation. And oh, yes. <laughs> you give energy. Good. Positive energy. <laughs> Question. Side note. Do you ever give negative energy? Yes. yes. Some of you are like. Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> what did you say? What else? What kind of teacher are you? Creative. Creative. Motivational. Real. real. That's not one word. No. Friendly. I'm real. Friendly. Real. Mixed. Wait, wait. Mixed. Wait. Wait. You in the back? Your personality. In my teaching. And you put your personality in your teaching. So give me one word about your personality. Guys, this is what I want you to do. Yes? What's that? 
Supportive. Supportive. Passionate. This is what I want you to do, homework. I want you to go to your class and ask your students what kind of teacher are you and to write it down on the piece of paper where they can use a couple more words. Tell them to be honest. An I did. Tell them you will not judge them. But tell them to be honest and see what they say. And then ask your students what kind of student are you? And have them write down the answer and see the similarities and differences, please. This is full personal and professional development today, guys. Okay. Try it. See what happens. Okay. So, next question. What are you trying to achieve for yourself? What are you trying to achieve? Next question. What are your strengths? What are your limitations? Whatever are your strengths, I want you to build on those strengths. Work on them, make them stronger, make them more effective. Whatever your limitations are, I want you to accept your limitations. It's okay, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect, no one's perfect, but yet your students think they're perfect, you know why? Because their parents make them think so. And yet they're not. Mindset. Limitations, what are your students' limitations in class? Communication. Lack of focus. Lack of focus, what else? What are your students' limitations? You should know this. This will make you a better teacher. <clears throat> they don't like limitations. They don't like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. No one likes limitations, but we have to understand what they are. Your students need to know. And I'm asking you, what are their limitations? Vocabulary, the micro skill. They're not motivated. Disinterest. They're not Disinterested. interested. Comprehension skills. Like comprehension skills. Comprehension skills. Lack of skills in writing. Writing skills. So it's the macro and micro skills of English plus social emotional relationships. Okay. I want to put you in a framework of how to think and how to feel with your students. It's not easy. Guys, oh, it's not easy. Teaching is, my goodness. It is. I'm sorry, wouldn't it be better to say pros and cons as language teacher? Would you like to put pros and cons? Would you like to put pros and cons? Because our, our students or our uh, children's understanding is different. Would you like to put pros and cons? Yeah. Would you like to put advantages and disadvantages? Yeah. You may do so. As a teacher, as a presenter, I am working with you guys. If that's what you wish to do, go right ahead. I, myself, am using these words. But whatever you want, customize it your way. Okay, next. How have I developed as a teacher since I started teaching? Are you in your comfort zone? Are you in your comfort zone? No. Maybe. Come on. Uh, it's yeah. nice, it's warm, it's fuzzy, it's cozy, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's safe. Yes. You know what the problem is though? We are extending our comfort zones too much, as are your students. So, <coughs> are there any gaps in your knowledge? Gaps. Yes. I say this sometimes in my talks, I will repeat it again, in our schools, mm -hmm. In our classrooms, as my colleague Costa said, we have differentiated learning. We have different levels of English. We have our higher performing students, our lower performing students, and our average students. And so when that is seen in a classroom, our students feel different. They feel superior. They feel inferior. So a mindset in class can be that each and every one of you including myself as a teacher, we have gaps. 
That makes everybody equal. Some of us may have larger gaps. Some of us may have high, smaller gaps. High performing students. But you all have gaps. Our job together is to minimize those gaps. Now, our role as a teacher is in fact, is indeed multifaceted, like a diamond. I'm not going to sing the song, but guess, this is how we are. You're not just a teacher. And I've said this again, and I'm going to say it again, because I want you to remember this. You are a mother, a father, a brother, a sister. What else are you? Raise your hand, please. Greg, you're changing the direction. Yes. Raise your hand, please, and I will call on you. What else are you? What is your role? Yes. Sometimes a confidant. A confidant. And it's so important to build trust. Yes, and honesty with your students. What else are you? Raise your hand. What else are you? You are a doctor, a nurse. Yes, and yes, you could be a male nurse. That's okay. Yes. What else are you? See, you're not paying attention, students. This time, I want you to raise your hand, please. A friend. Sometimes I want you as a friend. What else? Mother. Yes. Mother. A mother. What else? Psychology. A writer. A writer. What else? Raise your hand. Raise your hand and I will call on you. You see how you're acting like students? This is so funny. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes? Educator. An actor. Yes. A former. An actor. Yes? Counselor and a therapist. A counter, counselor, a counselor, 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 no. <laughs> counselor, therapist, uh, yes, you're a psychologist, no, a psychopath, no, no, <laughs> a singer, a dancer, a clown. And what we are doing, guys, is showing our different roles because that's what you got to do as a teacher. Stop being so serious. They have that. They have that with their parents, man. Come on. So, what am I going to give you today? I'm going to give you a personal approach, some ideas, some guiding concepts in teaching. Anything I do, anything I say, isn't just like, oh, I have an idea. Let me share it with you. No, it's based on research, case studies discussions, and put into practice. I will, never tell you, I will never tell you something that doesn't work. What I will tell you is, if you don't try, how do you know? Just like our students, they don't try hard enough. Because they're afraid of what? Failure. Hmm? Failure. Failure. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, to fail. I think we all are. Really? Are you really? Yeah. You guys are afraid to fail? Yeah. Guys, wrong mindset. If you guys have this mindset, holy moly, they do. So, let's try to change this, huh? Okay. Fail. Dear parents, I, Greg Sotaropoulos, teacher of over 26 years, wish for your students to fail. What? Are you crazy? No. First, thank you, gorgeous, love it. First attempt at learning. I've said this again, I'm gonna say it again. First attempt at learning. Failing isn't a, isn't a bad thing, it's not negative. Because what I want your students to do is to fail again. And then the parents look at me and go, and I go, Fail again, but fail better. <laughs> That's what the parents do too. They go, <laughs> and then I ask them, what does that mean? And they go, I don't know. <laughs> and I go, guys, it means that they are improving. And so when I have a child, my kids, 
And they come home and they go, oh, shit, Dad, I got a 70. And I go, all right. And they go, next week, maybe, reach for an eight. I'm not going to tell them to 100. It may not be realistic. They come next week and they go, Dad, oh man, I got a 75. And I go, all right, 80 was your goal. We got a 75. That's still good. Did so you improve? Yes. Yeah, but not as much as I wanted to. All right. Then what does that mean you have to do? I need to make some changes. I need to work hard. <laughs> Now this may sound gay and lovely. You see, when your kids go home, they don't have their parents to help them with English. They have to do it on their own. They have to be responsible, which is one of the guiding concepts I'm gonna talk about. But the first one that I'm gonna talk about is self-awareness. Looking at yourself as a teacher. Stop pointing the finger at the system, at the director, at the principal, at your colleagues. Because it's so much easier to be aware of others than to be aware of yourself. So let me help you with this a little bit, OK? Socrates said it best. Know yourself, guys. I mean, really know who you are as an individual. I said this 10 minutes ago. This comfort zone. What are you uncomfortable about? Tell me. What are you uncomfortable about? Wake up! <laughs> Go ahead, some people just go, ah, just a little. Go ahead, what are you uncomfortable about with yourself as a teacher? Hmm? Routines. Yes, routines. When they fall into a routine, people get bored and lazy. Yes. Disrespected, not appreciated. <clears throat> Disrespect. Gratitude, not feeling appreciated. Guess what? Truth is, teachers aren't around the world. We are considered down here. And yet we are the ones who are literally molding our FGACs. No one else is doing that. English teachers. You can do so much more than the others. <coughs> what else? What are you uncomfortable about? Waiting. Hmm? Giving grades. Not grades. Yeah, giving grades. Giving grades. It's like, come on, man. I don't want to grade them on their comprehension. I want to grade them on other things, too. Like one kid in what was it, Lima. He was so kind so helpful to his other students. He wasn't a very strong student, but he was always there to help. And the teacher wanted to give him something, <laughs> something to say, you're, you you're excelling, you're growing, to appreciate what he's doing. And so she decided that every month she's gonna give awards for kindness, respect, gratitude, things like that. And it worked. And kids developed. All right. Is it hot in here? Are you guys okay? Yeah. Huh? Yeah? All right. I think some of you had a late night last night because you're getting a little bit tired. I'll wake you up soon enough. Don't worry. <laughs> bad mood! Bad mood! <laughs> when you're in a bad mood, stop making decisions. Don't make decisions when you're having bad moods. But guess what? 
when you're euphoric <laughs> and in a really good mood, be careful because sometimes you make the wrong decision as a teacher. Be careful with this. But tell your students, today I'm not in a good mood. Yeah, I do that sometimes. And the students are going to go, yeah. holy cow, me too. <laughs> And then what do you say? They don't say you are it's a okay. teacher. No, no, wait. I, okay, you're the class, yes. and I'm your teacher. And I go, before I begin the class today, I just want to tell you I'm in a really bad mood. And all of a sudden, some of you guys say, I am too. Oh, my goodness. What do you say? Why? why? <laughs> guy, guys, the question is why. Why, 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 why? Why are you in a bad mood? And they'll say, because of this. And I go, oh my God, I, would, I understand how you feel. When I was a kid, I also experienced that. That's called what? Empathy. Mm. Oh my God, it works. Because then your students are going to go, he, she is so cool. They understand me. <laughs> I can talk to them and build trust and honesty and the relationship. Have a bird's eye perspective of your class. Stop teaching like this. I want you to teach up here and see what's going on. <clears throat> this is huge right now. Personal feelings, we're, we're hypersensitive. Everyone's just so starting to Like, oh, it's all starting from, from the States, from America. Don't step on my emotions. <laughs> I can't tell you my emotions. <laughs> yes, you can. You should. Yes? You see, I'm very tall. I can see everybody. So be careful. Lucky. All of you in the back. Some, see, some people are missing, though. <laughs> no. What about short people? They're you not... can't see the ones in the back. No. What We're do we do? I'm like a gentle giant. Get a ladder. Get a ladder and here. teach from a bird. I don't like that. <laughs> Media emotions, guys. <coughs> when we were kids, those of us who are my age, we didn't have media emotions because we didn't have media. We didn't have social media. No, we didn't have that. What we had was face to face. What we had was nice to see you, nice to meet you. Let's play some soccer. Let's have a good time. What did you say? Are you serious? Come on, man. You're like, oh, my God. And then you argue, you yell, you're not friends, you leave. And then the next day you're like, no, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. we're good friends now. That was back in the day. Now, something happens. What did you, what did you, what did you say? Block. I'll tell, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, no. Post that video. Blow them up and, yeah, blow them up and fix them. Black yeah. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah. Probably Yeah, go ahead. Destroy them. Yeah. It's that's, done. What that's what happens to our FGACs. And then they come back to class the next day and they are an absolute mess. Because the problem that he had with me, everybody now knows about it and everybody's against either him or me. My daughter's 15. You can't imagine the damage control I have to do. With what goes on on that? It's horrible. And it goes to school. And then they can't focus on a grade and on a test. Sound familiar? Yeah. It's not easy. <clears throat> Values. <clears throat> Those of you who saw the books, well, the books that were out there, in all of our course books, from starting from pre-primary, primary, all the way up to secondary, we have values in our books, in our stories, in our concepts, in our functions, to teach the message, to teach our students values, what's going on. That is so important to take into consideration to them on publications. Oh, 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 what is this? Woo -hoo -hoo. What's that? 
What does that say? We don't have any. No. That's my second name. I'm going to get that as a tattoo. Stress. Stress. What are you stressed about? Oh, the list is just too much, Greg. Tell me one thing you're stressed about. Bills. I know. Because you make so much money as being teachers. <laughs> yeah? What are you stressed about? Time management. Time management. Yeah, time. Oh, that's a killer. I hate it. Work-life balance. Work-life balance. Uh, giving feedback on their writing. Giving. You, you, okay. You said writing twice. <laughs> mm. Wait, let me think for a minute. Writing. Teachers and taking notes. Journals. <laughs> yes, I will talk about that in my fourth concept. All right. What else? Order. Who? Order. Order. Such as? Oh, oh, all right. I don't want to know if you're in here. If there are any directors in here, I don't. I don't want to know. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but being given orders from hierarchy. From, yes. All right. I'll be So I don't know So yes, that's difficult when you're told what to do and not necessarily how to do it or why, All right? Yes. Working on an appearance and not on quality. No, working on? A appearance. Appearance. Yeah. As opposed to? Not as, uh, the person not as a person. She can smoke a common name, she's cheap to pertain on this. Flash. Ah, okay. I like this. <laughs> so, how do your students in college view you that's why I put it there. Because a school wants the class to be perfect. Put in a little box. I open the box. They learn something. They get a test. They do the test. Everyone is perfect. I put it back in the box. I tie the ribbon. Yes. And outside, that's how it shows. But in our profession, we have a Pandora's box. Mm. And that Pandora's box can be controlled if we wish, if we do the right job. And what I hate is when I go to a school and they say, come and speak to a class. And they tell me they don't speak, they don't speak, they don't like to speak. And I say to the teacher, if you're telling me this, if you by telling me that your students don't speak and don't understand, what does that tell me about you as being their teacher? And so as I go in, they start to talk. And the first thing the teacher says is, shh, shh, shh. And I ask myself, Greg, yes. This is an English classroom, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Schizo. And I go, Schizo. <laughs> and I go, why is the teacher telling them to be quiet when English is about communication? And so I say, no, shush, shush, shush. I go, what are you talking about? And the one kid says, how tall are you? And I go, good question. Michael Jordan? And I go, yeah, that's how tall I am. No oh, shit. I go, yeah, really? I'm 2'2", two, 6'7". Two, and they go, oh my. God, yeah, that's really tall, yeah. And then they go, another student goes, they're looking over there, and I go, what? And they go, I like your tattoos. And I go, thank you. Do you like Superman? Do you like Superman? Yeah. I play chess too. Who is this person? Who's this person? And we are communicating. <laughs> Do you think they cared about making mistakes when they were talking to me? No. They were making so many mistakes, and I was loving it. Why? Because they were trying. 
And so that's what you're saying. I don't I want to just be free, man. All right. Be careful with this. You bring this into class. I want you to ask your students a question. Write this down. FGACs. One thing that you're stressed about is what? In my father. See what they say to you. Chances are five of them are going to say grammar. Second concept. <clears throat> Be you. Seriously? Be you. Be authentic. Don't be fake. I hate fake teachers. I hate fake students. And yet, that's what they're influenced by. Influenced by on Instagram. This fake persona. I have to look this way, act this way, and be this way. No, you have to be yourself. Okay. A growing relationship can only be nurtured by genuineness. To be genuine. Okay. In authenticity, I want you to invest in your personal growth, not just your professional. Find who you are. Grow as an individual. There's things you want to do that you say, I don't have time. Time management. If you do have time, you're just not making it. So when we say to our students, study for a test, and they go home and they're on fourth night for three hours, and TikTok and Insta, <coughs> Snapchat for five hours, and they're watching Netflix for six hours. <coughs> you may be doing the same thing. Think of, huh? I told you, I, I, How does he know? You guys are looking at me and they're like, oh my God, yeah. Okay. So in the fifth, fourth guiding concept of journal writing, you are going to start practicing and exploring how much time you are wasting that you should be using for personal growth. In authenticity, in our schools, in our classrooms, in our personal life, we may be in the company of naysayers. Naysayers, people who go, oh, come on, man. That idea you have in class is stupid. That ain't gonna work in our school. It's too extreme, too crazy, too loco. No. And yet I tell you, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Because these naysayers, and it's also society, spreads self-doubt. And I don't want you to doubt yourself. I know many of you. I've seen you before. I've heard you before. I've spoken to you before. So each time you are in my company, I want you to continue to peel back that self-doubt, kick it to the curb. Now, if you have paper in front of you, you're taking notes. I want you to write down the answer to this question. First question. Write this down. I want total silence. I do not want you to share your answer with the person next to you. And the question I'm asking you now is, what makes you, what makes you feel good? Write it down. What makes you feel good? But yet all those versions are you. What makes you feel good? Someone just asked. As a teacher or as a person? All of that is encompassed in one. It's, it's the same. What makes you feel good? And then underneath that answer, <coughs> this is so funny. 
What did I say before I asked the question? Don't share. Don't share your answer. Don't speak with anyone. Just think of your answer and write it down. It is so hilarious how me standing up here, I'm putting you in your student's shoes, and you are doing exactly what your students do. Second question, write the answer down underneath. Who makes you feel good? Who makes you feel good? And my name ends with two G's, just so you know. It's G-R-E double G, now it's one G. Just in case you're asking. Homework. You are going to ask your students, and I want them to write down the answer, because if they raise their hand, they copy each other. Yeah. Write down the answer and ask them, what makes you feel good and who makes you feel good? Now, in the answer of what makes you feel good, who put down food? <laughs> raise your hand if you put food. Okay, I got one. I one there. Okay, two people, good, I got you. What makes you feel good? When your students do well in class, who wrote that? Put your hands up. What makes you feel good? Traveling. Shopping. Reading, drinking, sports, hanging out, sleeping, clubbing, uzuka, singing, exercising, nature, hugging, rock climbing, acting like a tiger. I don't know, I'm going by what you say, what you're doing. Good talk, good friends. Okay. All right. What else makes you feel good? What else? Make it simple. What else makes you feel good? Just say the answer. Playing football. What makes you feel good? No, 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 no. What makes you feel good? What makes you feel good? Your son makes you feel good. Yes. Okay. Love it. So who makes you feel good? Your children. Your students. Your son and your students. Family. Who else makes you feel good? Myself. No. Should. And you should. Yourself. Right. Wait a second. Wait a second. Who makes you feel good? Best friends. Who makes you feel good? Who? Wait a minute, I can, guys, this is a test. She's sitting all the way in the back, but you guys here are talking to me. I want her to say the answer again. Grateful people. Yes, thank you. Who else? Familia. Anyone with their dog? Their pet? Now, you're going to say to me, a pet isn't who, it's what. Is it really? It has a name, so it's a who, exactly. Yes. Besides Greg, my family. Your family. Your family. Very brave. Pets. My partner. Yes. I'm recording. Yes, none of you said my husband or my wife. Too. Of course. <laughs> I'm going live. Because husband or wife is on the other slide with stress. <laughs> Intuition. Guys, exactly. Follow your gut. Follow your Stop listening to what other people are telling you to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap, don't do it. What 
did he say? What did he say? In being authentic, in school, students spend many years with their, with their teachers. And if they're lucky throughout all their years of education, it's not fun sometimes, I understand that. But if they're lucky, they may just have a couple of teachers that make a difference in their lives. And that's the very best of luck for a student. And so I want you to know this, that after six, 26 years in education, <coughs> You are making a difference with your students. They don't know it right now. They will know it later. Okay. They will. Third guiding concept. Accountability. Responsibility. Students and society are not accepting responsibility. We are accusing blaming others for the problems that we're facing. And so, standardized tests, state tests, grades, accountability, sometimes these things are taking the fun out of our learning learning out of our classrooms, and this stresses you out, because you can't do the things you want to do because you have to prepare them for other things. So when we were kids, when we were kids, this would happen. I would go home with a bad grade, and my father would be like, Dietan is there! Because my father spoke Greek and I. Translation. What did you do? What is this? And I would be like, I'm sorry, I swear to God. And my mother would be like, You can't go out with your friends. You can't go play in the park. You can't play with dirt, sticks, and stones. You can't, can't break my bones. You can't call. You can't call your friend. And then, because the phone was on the wall, and you couldn't do anything until your grades went up. And I sat It's like a character from a movie. Because my friends were out playing, and I was home. And it hurt. 